albatross parents do not recognise their chick by sight, sound or smell. What turned into a moment of relief quickly turned into a moment of suspense. So this was a shoot on Bird Island, which is an island, off an island uh, called South Georgia. It's in the sub-Antarctic. Beautiful, rugged landscape, uh, the home of all those beautiful big birds. On the bottom of the island, you have fur seals. And then as you're hiking up further the mountain, you come across the gray-headed albatross that are on the edge of the cliff. And those were the birds that we went to film. And they are just so beautiful. They've got these beautiful gray heads, but then their beaks have a bit of black on the side and then a strip of orange and yellow. And they're just so gorgeous. And you see pictures of them, but it, nothing compares uh, to real life. The chicks are so cute. And when they're alarmed, they sort of crane their necks up and they end up looking like bowling pins because they're just these little little white sort of dump, dumpy shapes and just craning their necks. Um, they're just so characterful, so characterful, but yeah, so vulnerable on top of that mountain. We had just been filming uh, three different chicks in the colony, so three different, three different spots and get, getting to know them. So when we were out filming, we noticed that the wind was starting to pick up um, and it was getting stronger and stronger by the moment. Uh, we were certainly getting buffeted about uh, and our three chicks were certainly getting, getting the worst of it. It's really hard to leave a situation like that because you know that the evening is going to be really, really difficult. The winds were getting stronger and stronger and you just don't really know what you're going to come back to the next morning. So I don't think any of us slept very well that night. Uh, we were wondering whether they'd be still there in the morning. It was raging all night. And then so the next day when it abated, we, we did our hike towards the, the colony. Checked chick number one. Uh, he was still there looking very wet. Check chick number two. Luckily, he was still there, <laughs> looking very wet. And, and then we went to chick number three, and uh, what we saw was the nest next to chick number three. Um, his neighbor was, was dead. Uh, I think because it was so cold that night and so windy, uh, it had succumbed to exposure, and the poor the poor chick had its, um, had its head uh, outside the nest sort of dangling down and it was just so terrible to see just this little limp, uh, vulnerable <laughs> baby really. And then, and then our chick number three um, was, was off his nest. Chicks fall off their nest when it's uh, really windy and climate change has has caused storms to be stronger, which means more chicks are falling off their nest. And you're seeing it with your own two eyes. And it was, it was terrible. <laughs> it was, the chick was freezing cold, it was wet, it looked scared, it looked exhausted. And, you know, how long had it been there for? And me and my team just, stood there dumbfounded we didn't really know what to do <laughs> the spell was kind of broken from the camera assistant saying should I go and get the camera <laughs> as human beings you know we're not we're not just filming robots we're seeing this vulnerable thing in front of us that you could potentially save so me and the cameraman had 10 minutes to deliberate uh, sort of how comfortable we feel with 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 filming this um, so the camera assistant returned and we decided okay well we need to film some of the chick off its nest because 
you know, this is this is part of the story and we know that if people see this at home, it's going to be really impactful. You think, okay, saving one chick is one thing, saving a whole population of grey-headed albatross if we show the world this is another. So we, we started to film the chick. And then we saw this bird fly overhead and land, a grey-headed albatross adult. Um, and then we saw it walking to, uh, towards us and we thought, oh gosh, I hope this is a parent. <laughs> please be its parent, please be its parent. And um, it came straight up to the nest and, and jumped on the nest. Um, and so we all sighed a collective sigh of relief. Also, it takes the decision out of our hands because we have an adult here. If we try and do anything, the adult is going to fly away. And the chick was cheeping and cheeping, trying to get the attention of the adult, and the adult ignored it. Um, so we'd heard, we'd heard about this. This is one of the parts of the story that we wanted to film. Our, our scientist, our albatross scientist, said that albatross parents do not recognize their chick by sight, sound, or smell. They only recognize their chick when the chick is on the nest. What turned into a moment of relief quickly turned into a moment of suspense because this chick was already exhausted. It was trying to get, it was finding it hard to get back on when nothing was sitting on the nest. And then now there was this huge, huge parent in the way. We kept filming and kept crossing our fingers and hoping. And what happened was that the chick had almost a, a second wind. It, it, it managed to muster some energy by seeing that parent. It just went for it. I think just the fact that the parent was there, he it kind of knew that you know, I'm so close to warmth, I'm so close to being fed. And finally, it managed to get up and the adult stood up at the right time and it managed to tuck in. And amazingly, the parent just recognizes it straight away. It's just insane. And, and sits down on it and warms it and then that 20 minutes afterwards, we were filming it being fed five, five times and just a, a model of a parent. But I think it was one of the most tense moments of my life. And as a director, also just one of, would have potentially been one of the hardest decisions I had to make if that parent hadn't, hadn't come. Yeah, when I left that island, I was a different person than when I arrived. These chicks are so vulnerable and they don't know why this is happening to them. But I do. I know it's because of us. And that's not fair. It's not fair. We don't get to choose what lives and what dies, especially because of our irresponsible practices. On Bird Island, grey-headed albatross have decreased by half in the last 15 years. When the adults go out to sea, uh, they're getting hooked on long line and trawl the fisheries. And this has caused a great decline in the population. And now climate change is bringing that home to their chicks. So it's really the last nail in the coffin. There's hardly any nests that have chicks on them. So each one of those chicks is very, very precious. Every day we were going to that colony you see all these empty nests. You just realize that I'm seeing a species become extinct before my eyes. It was a moment that definitely changed my life and I always think of it and it has shaped my career from now on uh, and probably always will. <laughs>